Hey guys, it's Greg from Bit Goblin again. Wow, that's weird, because it's been a while, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a good weird, and I'm all for good weird. But anyways, today I'm going to show you all how to flash an AMD graphics card's vBIOS using the AMD VB flash tool. Frankly, this isn't something I would expect you would need to do very often, and really should only do it in a few very specific circumstances, like when there's a known bug that can be fixed with a vBIOS flash, or if you're trying to do some extreme overclocking and want to remove some power limits or whatever. But this is something that is very useful to know how to do when situations arise that do need it. And yeah, there's not really much else to say, so let's go ahead and get to the tutorial. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. So the backstory for this video is I got this RX 570 off of eBay for $107.50 plus another 15 or so for shipping, thinking this would be a fun GPU to look at for a... I'm out of breath. <sighs> so the backstory for this video is I got this RX 570 off of eBay for about $110 plus another 15 or so for shipping, thinking this would be a fun graphics card to look at for like a retrospective hardware review video and, you know, do all the benchmarks and junk to see how it performs in uh, today's games. But I had all kinds of trouble trying to load up the Radeon driver on Windows with this thing installed on my test bench. So I tried anything I could think of like different driver versions, updating Windows, different PCI Express slots, completely erasing the driver in safe mode with DDU, thinking maybe there's something corrupt installed. I even tried a whole separate system, my fiance's PC was really handy for this one, and still no luck. So I was thinking, what a bummer, I gotta return it, and thankfully eBay has a 30 day return policy. So long story short, I documented everything that I tried to get this card to work, and the seller gave me a refund to, and told me just to keep it to see if I can get it working. And right at that moment, it dawned on me to try a BIOS flash to see if that would help, and what do you know? I basically got a free graphics card. Well, almost. I had some trouble with the display dropping out frequently for seemingly no reason, but I eventually figured out this was due to using an HDMI cable for the monitor instead of DisplayPort. I think this was something to do with FreeSync requiring a newer cable because the HDMI cable I was using was kind of old and it worked fine on my GTX 970 and R R9270X, which I don't believe were FreeSync compatible. But either way, that's not really the point of this video, it's a completely separate issue. And the point for this video was, once I flashed the vBIOS on this card, it was working again. So I'm going to show you all what I did to do this. Actually, here's something else I noticed when I was trying to set up my system to demonstrate. You can see I have my power supply on, please ignore the dust everywhere, it has been a while and everything else about my test bench is normal and seemingly ready to go. I try to power on the PC, and nothing really happens. The fans on my RX 570 spin for a second, then immediately ramp down. The Quadro P1000's fans are going, but not much else actually happens. Oh, and yes, I know my CPU cooler's fan isn't on the tower, that was just to make it easier to swap graphics cards. But essentially the fans keep ramping up and down on the 570, there's no display, the mouse and keyboard do nothing, and my monitor is just in standby mode. So this behavior came up when I was trying to flash another BIOS to demonstrate using the AMD VB flash tool, and what I needed to get around this was to swap another graphics card into the top PCI Express slot and use that for the display to get it to post. Alright, now that we're in Windows, let's quickly take a peek at GPU-Z to see what firmware version is loaded so we can later verify that the VBIOS flash actually worked. Once GPU-Z finishes starting, we can switch over to the RX 570 using this little toggle at the bottom, and this BIOS version string is what we're looking for. Don't feel bad if this sequence of numbers or whatever doesn't mean anything to you. It, as far as I can tell, is just a bunch of numbers. But just know that this version right here is the old BIOS for this card in particular, and this string will match what we'll see later on on Tech Power Ops website. So the first thing we need to do is download the AMD VB Flash tool from the Tech Power Up website. In a web browser, go to www.techpowerup.com. I'll leave a link to this page in the video description down below. And once the site loads, go to Downloads, and then AMD VB Flash slash ATI Flash. The latest version available as of the time of filming this video is 3.31. I'm not entirely sure how the versioning scheme works here, since you would think that 4.71 is a newer version than 3.31. But according to this, 3.31 was released in 2022 and 4.71 in 2021. So, whatever. However it works, we're going to roll with 331 for today. Click the download button for 331, and then select the regional server to download from. I'm from the US, so I'm selecting a US server. The download should kick off, and then let's open up the zip file and extract it. Nice and easy. 
Next, now that the tool is downloaded, we need to grab the vBIOS image to flash to our card. To do that, back on Tech Power Up, go to Databases, and then VGA vBIOS Collection. This is basically just a big list of vBIOSes for pretty much any card that you can imagine. But what we want to do here is start filtering down the results for our card, unless you really want to find it here. My card is a PowerColor RX 570 with 4GB of VRAM. Uh, so I'm entering that information here into these little drop-down boxes, but obviously you will need to enter the proper information for your card. Now that we've got everything narrowed down, I have four options here. They look pretty similar, but they're different versions that we can use to flash to our card. As we can see in this column here, the version strings are a little bit different. It looks like the second and third rows are duplicates, and the first one was possibly a bad build or something since it is the same version as the next two, but those were posted just mere hours later. Either way, today we're going to roll with this fourth one since it is the latest version, so just click on the download link for that option and the ROM file that we need will start downloading. Now, just to organize my files a little bit, I'm going to open up my downloads folder and copy this file over to this AMD vBIOS folder that I created on my desktop. Finally, we're back at the desktop with two folders open. One is the extracted AMD VB flash tool from earlier, and the other is a folder on my desktop with the old and new firmware images. To flash our new image, we need to double click to open the AMD VB flash win executable, accept the admin privileges prompt if you get it, and you'll see a window like this, which is a pretty simple UI with some information about our card and some buttons to do things. All we need to do is click on load image, navigate to the folder on my desktop with the ROM files, Select the new ROM, which in this case is the one ending with 181011. Then hit program on the main window, and now you just gotta wait a hot minute while the flash commences. Once it's done, you'll be prompted to reboot, so go ahead and do that, and I'll catch you on the other side. Now that we're back up and in Windows, all we're going to do is open up GPU-Z, select the RX 570, and we should see the BIOS version match the one that we downloaded from the website which I remember because of this two right here in the middle of the string. And just as a final check, I swap my RX 570 back in place and have it connected to my monitor and look at that, it's back up and booting normally. Awesome. All right, so now that uh, everything's working on this card, kind of thinking back on the eBay purchase earlier for this card, uh, part of me kind of feels bad because technically I could have tried doing this prior to filing for a refund. You know, the card is actually functioning now. But I'm also of the mindset that the seller should have done their due diligence to make sure they were selling a functioning card, especially since it was listed as fully functional, or at least not listing as having a defect. And I would also say that you shouldn't expect the average gamer to have to do this if they're buying a card used or not. I mean, heck, flashing a BIOS on anything does have its risks. And had I done this and it did not fix the issue or potentially made it worse, then I did not want there to be any question on when or how the card got borked. So. Yeah, I guess I'll just leave it as I got lucky on this one. And heck, maybe maybe you will too if you uh, you know if, if you underbid someone on a graphics card just for fun and see what happens. But overall, hopefully this video was useful to someone out there. So if you liked it, then please go hit that like button so it gets recommended to more people that may need this little tutorial. Otherwise, if you didn't like it, then you know feel free to hit that thumbs down. It's okay. I won't hate you or anything. Also be sure to head down to the comment section down below and leave me your thoughts on the video with things like pointing out all the stuff that I got wrong, or if you had a similar situation where you've needed to flash a card's BIOS, then let me know. You know, that, the sharing stories is always fun. I've also got a Discord server if you'd like to join the community and just chat and hang out with us, or if you need it, we can try to help you out with your PC hardware problems. I hope you all have a great day, and I will catch you in the next one.